These are the sounds of seven mangoes. Seven mangoes. Yeah. yeah. All right, everybody, this is Eric Young with the sounds of Seven Mangoes with a very, very special guest. It's episode two, and I am here with Mr. Jared Bruyard. How are you doing tonight, Jared? Good. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for stopping by my very modest makeshift studio. Uh, we're here to record this episode because I am a big fan of your work, and your work is, in my opinion, filmmaking. I know you are a man of many talents. Uh, you are a multi-dimensional dude, uh, but I really admire your filmmaking. And uh, so we're going to talk a lot about that and uh, 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 some other things. So let's just jump right into it, dude. Sure. Um, the first first thing on the docket, it, it, uh, according to the what I wrote, is we're going to tell the story of how we met slash the first project that we worked on. Yes. All right. It's a good story. <laughs> yeah. So you, in your words, tell me what was that first project that you and I worked on together? What was that like? Okay. Well, first of all, high praise and I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> about what you said. Um, but yeah, yeah. It was like a serendipitous type of thing, like where um, we had already had our son, my wife and I, and then your wife is friends with my wife, mm -hmm. and you guys just came over to get a book about what about giving birth, I guess, and and yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, I guess advice on having a kid and stuff. And you guys came over, and we hadn't met, and uh, and we started talking because they were talking about I don't even remember just what going were, on yeah, and on. Yeah, they were just talking. <laughs> and and, uh, and you and me, we we something came up where you mentioned that you were into editing or something. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I'm going to put this out right now. Editing is my least favorite part of filmmaking. I love every part of filmmaking, but mm. editing is a part that, a necessary evil that I just don't really enjoy. Feel you. Um, and uh, so it's always the kind of thing I have to do. Yeah. And there are elements of evil to it for sure. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I'm in the seventh layer of hell when I'm editing. It, exactly. And time yeah. just passes. And it's. And here's the other thing. <laughs> I like editing. Yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. That's my favorite part of making a digital production, but I still feel that way. And so. that's why it was serendipitous, because like the the situation was, I you said you're starting an editing company, and I and I said, well, you know, I I, I hate editing, but I, I make movies and I, I shoot them and I direct them and I write them, and um, it, it's uh, it's cool that you are into that because I'm not. Um, we sh maybe we should do something together, like because it seems weird that you came along and are into this and you seem cool. Um, and then uh, and then you uh, brought up the fact that you are wanting to do certain projects and and uh, sort of said, hey, you know, if there's something that comes up, we can we can work together on. I was like, yeah, absolutely. And then something did come up. It did. Well, I just like threw a pen. A pen. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw a pen right at Jared, he, like he, ninja star style. It struck me in the chest. You take it back. <laughs> <laughs> just because this is not a video podcast, you don't take advantage of the medium, sir. Um, so uh, I forgot what I was saying after I threw that <laughs> that projectile pen. At you. But uh, a project did come up, mm. and so uh, what had happened, I believe, between the two, the first two times that we met. Uh, was the first time maybe my digital media company was just kind of coming into its own. And then the second time that we hung out, um, I had had this, this full-blown uh, you know, development of my company, Seven Mangoes, which is producing the podcast. Shameless plug. Uh, but So Seven Mangoes was uh, rocking and rolling. Uh, we had this one particular client, Greenlight, that needed a live shoot conducted where? Do you remember where it, we had to go? <laughs> Washington, D.C. for three days yeah. of the some of the hardest work I've ever done right. in my life. It, it was really, really difficult. Right. But to everyone out there <laughs> that's interested in uh, freelancing with Seven Mangoes, oh, there's, there's a winning uh, testimony right there. Hardest three days of my life. <laughs> What I remember about that shoot is the record-breaking heat in Washington, oh, D.C. And here's the thing. I've worked in Washington, D.C. in another capacity – for years, I, I've led uh, student group tours in Washington, D.C., which is how I met Greenlight Group Tours and how I got into producing their company videos. Um, but I've been to D.C. plenty of times. Dude, the, the three days that we were there shooting, 
hottest three days, I believe, maybe in recorded history of our nation's capital. I hope so, because <laughs> um, I still have a hole in my jeans from when I kneeled down to get a shot on the on the concrete and it burned through them like it was yeah. awful. Yeah, it was like shooting on the surface of planet Mercury. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> yes. Um, what else about that that shoot? I remember day zero, like maybe it was the day before or day one of the shoot or whatnot. We had still not met the group, and and I remember we had like a battery situation, and <laughs> we yeah. like had to go to a mall in Crystal City, <laughs> Virginia, and we're like asking these minimum wage employees at the Best Buy about this very specific battery that we needed. Uh. And we're like <laughs> chasing them around the store, and they're like, "No, like we really don't care about you." <laughs> like, but we desperately needed this battery, and I think we wound up ordering it from Amazon and getting it the yes, next day. Yes, but something. there was a long period of time where we would have to plug in the batteries to recharge them on the bus yeah. while we were filming. Right. And <laughs> Thank goodness for that group having a charter bus with outlets. Yes. Because that's true. not every, every no. group. <laughs> But uh, so that was awesome, man. Jared, um, you know, definitely like soldiered up for me <laughs> those those three days. Uh, it, it was definitely very, very different from the projects that you normally do. But I was like, hmm, somebody that knows how to turn on a camera and point it at things. <laughs> I could use this gentleman. Uh, but anyway, obviously, you know, wound up uh, being the start of a really cool partnership because yep. uh, so you've worked with with me on a seven mango shoot. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it turns out that I guess this is kind of the segue to the next yeah. segment. You told me a really interesting story. I think that you kind of got the idea for the character that I played in your movie recently. And that is going to be the primary subject of today's podcast. Mr. Jared Bruyard here has recently released a, uh, a self-produced film called Earth Perks. Uh, it is on YouTube and I am going to link the YouTube link uh beneath you know in the description of, of this podcast but anyway so um uh, with, with earth perks y it seems like when you and i were shooting in dc i guess you were just kind of like thinking of what your next project was you were developing characters but anyway you told me this story about how on that shoot you there was something that you saw me doing that gave me gave you the idea for the character that i eventually played in this movie so what was that all about okay yes so it, it, exactly exactly the it's funny the character came became before the movie um i we, we were walking around dc getting ready to film and you had sunglasses on and you were on your cell phone and you were like talking business and it's funny cuz when you are doing that you're not in t you're you're very like Wall Streety, like you're very, <laughs> like, you're not you're not because we we got to know each other pretty well, and like you're not you're such a nice guy, but like when you're doing that, you're very business like, and it's it's very uh, like uh, smoothy, and and it, it just it, it, I was like, man, that's like a character in a movie, like he's this different person when he's doing this, and it it just struck me, and I was like, that sounds like a, I'll put it in a movie someday, and then um, and then uh, this idea came along for Earth Burks while I was uh, on the longboat key in the morning when the sun was rising walking the beach by myself and uh and i longboat key is that on the west coast of florida right yeah 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 like was... by the siesta key lido key e area exactly those key. keys yeah those the keys. other keys the other keys i wonder if they should make that a whole like marketing strategy for them yes like, we're the other keys don't lose like... your keys <laughs> longboat key. yeah or, like you remember like the other white meat for pork yeah. like <laughs> Like what? The what if they like did a whole play off of that? That they're like, we're the other Florida keys. Got to you... take down Disney. We got to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to remind everybody about their keys. They forgot. <laughs> yes. No. They... <laughs> anyway, yes. Yeah, so I was thinking about the uh, the movie while I was walking the beach, and um, and I realized, oh, this is like because I, I needed um, to give some background on the movie. The movie's called Earth Perks. It's um, the story of an alternate uh, dimension of 2015 where we have gone to. Um, other planets um, in the past and colonize them. And um, it's getting to the point now where like people are no longer wanting to really live on Earth because it's boring and they want to move to other planets and moons and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so the UN realizes that this is um, a problem and we're losing people on Earth and we need more people to stay. Uh, so they kind of get a deal with, cut a deal with a newspaper to uh, um, sort of uh, talk people into staying on Earth, like reminding them of the perks of staying here. Um, and uh, the way they do that is they hire someone from another moon uh, that was born on a moon, um, not on Earth, who's never been to Earth, but um, is excited to see it and can talk about it as, as an outsider. 
Um, so, of course, this main character is very excited about Earth and, and everything. And that was the problem I had while I was writing the movie is, is uh, it was a little too positive. Like, it was a little too happy-go-lucky, and, mm. and she was enjoying Earth too much. And, and I needed some sort of um, negative thing going on to, to kind of counteract that. Um, and I was like, well, this might be a good, a good reason to bring in this character that I thought of when I saw Eric, like he could be sort of the, the, the yin to her yang sort of situation where he doesn't like earth and, and, uh, and she has to interview him and he kind of lets it on the line that he's not really a fan and, and he's not like her at all. And he's negative and she's positive and, um, and maybe it would be kind of cool if if uh, if their relationship like um, evolved from there a little bit um, for a, the short film that it is. Um, and yeah, it worked out and uh, it was fantastic. And um, I highly recommend uh, watching it mostly to see Eric because he's fantastic in it. Obviously, I'm the most important <laughs> part of the movie. Yeah, it, be, it goes without saying. Oh man, he plays the character I wrote for him based on him <laughs> very well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I guess I should have had that in my motivation when I was acting out that scene was like, be my, my phone call douchey self. <laughs> like, just imagine that I'm on a phone call because dude, you're totally right. I've never even realized that about myself, but it, more than likely if I was on the phone in DC, what I was doing was like talking to one of the levels of like bureaucrats that I needed to, um, you know, get some sort of like fake permissions from in order to shoot in DC. So that was like, you know, uh, phone call number 299 out of like 300 for that whole project. So I was totally just over talking to those people. <laughs> and I, I probably did just have so much more of like a D-bag kind of tone about it. But anyway, so I'm still flattered. I'm flattered that anything that I do can, you know, result in inspiration <laughs> to anyone, especially in, in, a, in a medium that I'm uh, really kind of like... I consider myself pretty naive when it comes to movies and especially filmmaking. So I guess that's what I kind of want to use this segment of the podcast for is to, is to ask you as you know, you are someone that you made a movie in mm. your spare time and now you are a husband mm. and a father. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is not your full time gig. This no. is not your, your sole, you know, artistic endeavor and purpose in life, but like you just, low-key, on the cash, like, you know, produce a movie. Mm. That's really, really awesome to me. What I also think is that you can kind of almost serve as, like, a template to maybe somebody who's just randomly listening out there uh, that has an idea for a film mm. and really doesn't have the encouragement or mm. maybe even the technical, logistical know-how on mm. what to do to, to go about making their idea into a film, especially mm. as a hobby in a spare time. Yeah. So... Talk a little bit about, you know, you, you, you mentioned what the, the idea, uh, where the genesis was, you know, when you were at the beach one morning. Yeah. But talk about the project mm. and the process of making this movie itself. Sure. And uh, let's just start with that. What, yeah. what, what was that like, given your situation? Absolutely. Um, I've made quite a few short films uh, since high school is when I started. Um, and I'm 35 now, so it's been a while. Um, but, yeah, uh, it's that the part of the process is really making a lot of stuff like uh my first stuff i can't even watch it it's so bad but i've the more i'm i, I do i call it the cringe test like the more i make stuff <laughs> the, le the, the less i cringe i must be doing it right because i, I like it better and it's working and it's and I, yeah. i'm proud of it and i can re-watch it and i enjoy it like earthworks for example is my favorite movie mm -hmm. i've made so far because mm -hmm. all the, of the knowledge i've gathered over the years making stuff um and uh writing is what i call my uh safety net where I, I make the script as good as I possibly can to the point where there's like buffers in there. So like if anything goes wrong while I'm filming, if something doesn't work out, I know that the script is good enough that it can sustain any kind of mess up while I'm filming. Mm. Um, and that's very important because um, there's going to be stuff like the old kill your darling, kill your darlings thing where you, you know, you're going to lose things um, that you loved while you were writing and they're not going to be in the movie. And it's OK because I, I put enough buffers in there and I'm, I'm confident with that right right right, right. um so that the right that's the writing part um when it comes to filming and making the movie um it really comes down to uh s scheduling and getting people to to get together on 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 time and um and together to to work together so we can um get it done um and sometimes that isn't the case and um 
Uh, this is a minor spoiler for the movie, and I, I can't believe I'm revealing this right now, but um, in the case of Eric's uh, scene, he acts to nobody uh, because we didn't have oh, yeah. the schedule together to be able to get the two actors together at the same time. It was totally weird. It was really weird. <laughs> he, he talks to nobody, and the other uh, main character, uh, played by Olivia, um, mm. Um, talks to nobody as well. And yeah. I had to edit it together later and direct it in a certain way to make it believable later. And uh, I happen to think, I don't know, knowing that, that maybe that's one of the most impressive pr- parts on the production end of mm. the film is mm. that that scene was shot separately. Yeah, um, I like to think of it as movie magic, like the, the fact that, that we can create uh, a relationship between two people that aren't have never met each other, and you still haven't met Olivia, uh, no, who plays the main character, which is really funny. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. you have a relationship in the movie, and, and that's and that's what that's what makes me love it so much is, is we can create stuff like that, and 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 I'm proud of the fact that it worked. Um, but yeah, the, the the scheduling part, the uh, um, getting people to get it and be ex- as excited about it as I am and mm-hmm. passionate about it is difficult um, sometimes because they don't see what I see in my mind. Um, but that's the job of a director is to is to is to try to make them understand and and get them there and and direct them and um, I think it was the Cohen brothers who said that di- directing is is uh, tone police uh, always making sure mm. that the tone is consistent um, because you can't have one person thinking this is a comedy scene and the other person thinking it's a drama scene and it doesn't doesn't work you got to make sure that people understand what this movie's saying and 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 the level that it's at. And that's the big, the, probably the hardest part of of, of uh, making the movie, as in shooting it um, and directing it. But I'm also really into cinematography, and and as we talked about with with the DC shoot, and that's really important to me because I think you can um, like bring a lot to the story when it comes to cinematography to make people understand what's going on and 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 the position of people. Uh, a very basic thing that you'll notice in Earth Perks is um, like when a camera is looking down at someone, it subconsciously tells the audience that that person is not as confident or in the in the getting the upper hand while mm. if the camera's facing up on a character it kind of tells the audience subconsciously that they're they're in feeling control dope. and they're the yeah. one in control or the, the one with the power my favorite shot if mm. i may sure, sure in earth perks absolutely um I, I mean first of all the whole scene with uh, uh the main character Mm-hmm. At the beach at sunrise. Oh yes. Which first of all, because I know you and I know like that beach, that's Coco Beach yeah, out yeah. there, like <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. an hour and a half away from where I live. <laughs> yeah. um, I know that. So because you guys shot at sunrise, mm. that I was like, oh man, yeah. they they must have had to have been awake so early. <laughs> yeah, seven. Uh, it was six thirty in the morning. There, because yeah. there's been times in my life where I have been so driven and motivated <laughs> to like catch a sunrise. Dude, even when I lived in South Florida, when I was 15 (laughs) minutes away from the beach, me and my friends would be motivated to go catch a sunrise. Totally blew it (laughs) every time. Super hard to be there. And, like, what you realize at a sunrise is, like, how fast the sun is moving around the earth basically at all points of the day, but it's really obvious when it's like raising from the horizon at that moment. Oh, yeah. So it's like when you're trying to shoot for that, it Ooh. must kind of be like, a, shit, shit, shit. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. the entire time that you're driving there and like setting up and prepping, it's just like, shit, shit, gotta make the sunrise. <laughs> so number one, I see that scene and I'm like super impressed that you guys mm. made it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that you just made it, period, <laughs> yeah. uh, for a sunrise. You had a beautiful sunrise. Mm. And then... um the I'm even realizing the complexity of the shot as I'm talking and thinking about it. And mm. it's when there is this like low angle. So the camera is, is facing up yeah. at the main character mm. um, f- while she's witnessing the sunrise on the beach. But you can't see any water. Instead, you can see the moon. Uh-huh, yeah. I, and it's like the shortest clip in that mm. whole montage. Uh, and I, I just find it wonderful it stuck out to me both oh, times that i've seen the movie thank you yeah. uh so i never really picked up on on you know the note of like she's feeling amazing at this moment but that's mm. w- is that kind of what you're trying to convey by that low angle shot a couple things yeah 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 the the amazing thing this is the pro i think it is like the first time in the movie where we have an up angle shot on her mm. um because she is new to this world and she's timid and and but excited and, and a little scared and mm. confused and um, but, but I, there's a deep connection that she finds with, uh, the ocean, um, in the movie, not having ever seen the ocean before and, and falling in love with it immediately, mm-hmm. um, that I wanted to convey there, but also show 
and like you said, the moon. She in the in the movie, she is from from a moon, a moon, and that's what I yeah. it, like. The connection was just made as I was talking about how much I like the shot, <laughs> and that <laughs> yeah. might be the coolest part of the shot. And I just realized it. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, yeah, it's Earth's moon, obviously, and she's yep. from a moon uh, from Jupiter, mm. uh, Europa. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did I, and um, anyway, I'm gonna yep. try not to. I'm <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. stumbling yeah. past yeah, 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 spoilers. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, you're still gonna enjoy the movie. <laughs> yes. You know, when you watch it, this is early um, stuff in the movie. Yeah. But it's um, you know, it's symbolic nonetheless that there mm. that it's her and a moon, and the moon is at a distance, and mm. now she's like here on Earth, and she's yeah. feeling great. Uh, but you can see both in the same shot. You can see how far she's come to experience that moment of glory and everything. Mm. So, uh, and and it's even sweeter that it is one of the shorter shots in there because you're like, ah, yeah. oh. yeah. like if it's you like, get it if you catch it, <laughs> right? It's yeah. a, uh, just a beautiful shot for so many reasons, Thank and you. then you only give it to them for such a short period of time. <laughs> you're like, that's all you get for free. <laughs> Deal with it. Um, yeah. So. Uh, another thing there's another project of yours that I've uh, long admired and Mm. that's another short film of yours also on YouTube called Mm. Clarity Mm. yes I thought Clarity Mm. um, also had uh, it it was almost how would you describe it like what sort of genre do you think that that one falls in what I was going for with Clarity was I am I got a little I love who done it's like yep. those kind of stories and that's what I, I was thinking exactly so I describe it yeah and but I but I always get frustrated that like it's all been done like I feel yeah. like we always know who did it like or we have an idea or it's like oh yeah yeah I figured it was probably mm-hmm. that I wanted to really put a twist on it and really like have it be sort of almost a devastating um, experience compared to what you're used to and also the idea that the the instead of having the detective be the main character, like the usual film noir things where you follow the detective to find out who did it or, or what's going on or the mystery or whatever, um, the detective is off camera for most of the movie doing his own stuff, doing his own research. We, uh-huh. never, we only see him twice. Yeah. But the main character, the girl... She's the one that's really lost, on the journey. Yeah, yeah. Her, her, her brief backstory of the movie a little bit. Her friend dies in like the first five minutes um, and she's trying to solve the... The, the mystery of how Figure her friend out, died. Yeah, exactly. um, instead of following the, tec- the detective, we find we follow this would-be detective who's just the friend a, who's the motivated friend. by compassion. Exactly. She yeah. loved her friend and she wants to find out what happened. And and we follow her trying to solve the mystery on her own because she doesn't want to wait for the cops to do it. Yeah. Um, and it's an idea I've gotten from my one of my favorite filmmakers, which is Brian De Palma. I always think that uh, female main characters are the most interesting. Um, Ah, why do you say that? Uh, because they're they're more complex, and like I and and because I don't really know what they're thinking. Like yeah. I I, I it, it's it's a mystery to me. So like I I, th- I think it's so much more interesting. Like I am like and they and they a always, lifetime of being confused by oh, women has led to that decision. And it's, <laughs> and they're, like and, and they're just great to work with, and like they they get it and they get passionate about the movie. Like mm-hmm. like uh, the, Olivia, who plays the main character in Earth Perks, uh, Christine, who's I've worked with many times since high school. She was my first movie in high school. Okay. My oldest friend. Yeah, she plays the main character in Clarity, and she. They 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 always surprise me because, like I said, they're not, I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know what their motivation is. I don't know like how they interpreted the script or the movie, and they they surprise me with great stuff. And like, and I'm always like, oh man, that's what I didn't think of that. From an acting standpoint, yeah, you're saying yeah. So so how about you in the writing phase, mm. like when you are a little bit mystified by what a woman may say or think or do in a situation. Yeah. Uh, how, how does that work for you? Do you find that to be a struggle or are you excited by the, the, uh, the lack of insight on what your character might do when you're writing it? Well, that's the thing is I, I come up with what I think is right yeah. when I'm writing it. Yeah. And then I have a couple spell checkers. I have the- You bounce it <laughs> off some chicks? <laughs> that's what I was well, thinking. That's the thing is, is the, main, the, the girl who's been the main character usually um, yeah. does that. She's yeah. like this, no. Like she'll read it and be like, no, <laughs> and then they'll do it there, and I'm like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. Cool. Um, and then I always say, similar to what Hitchcock used to do, my my final editor um, is my wife. She'll she'll watch the the sort of rough cut that I make that I think is good, and then she'll come back and be like, well, nah, 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 and say this needs to be not nah, this doesn't yeah. really work, and I, and I trust her, and I and I fix those things, and it, it's usually for the better. So mm. um, she's usually right about that. And um, in one point, a uh, movie I made called uh, Property that is like the only movie I've made so far that's actually been shown. It was shown at the Enzion in downtown Orlando, and that was like a dream come true for me. Um, she caught a major continuity error um, where um, a character says the address 
of the house that the movie takes place in, and I showed the number on the house, which was different in a ah. shot. And she caught it, and I didn't. And luckily she did, because I was able to cut it out at the last minute and save myself the embarrassment. <laughs> right. I mean, but, dude, I think that that's a story more so about, like, how great she is mm. at perceiving and observing continuity yeah. than it is about like that would have been a major embarrassment for you oh. nobody would have caught that <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> nobody <laughs> unless it was like that one person that's like hmm i'm gonna go watch amateur films and you know spy out some uh, continuity errors yeah. unless it's somebody that is specifically watching the film for that yeah. Um, but I mean, it, that's what I'm saying. She is probably one of those people that can just inherently do that very well. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's another thing that it, I really, really admire about your pursuit mm. as a filmmaker is that you've had these things, um, played at the Enzion, which, you know, for those of you that are listening outside of the greater Orlando area, mm. uh, that's like, a it's like an independent film theater house that's like in a real, you know, cultural part of town. It's like, yeah. like you mentioned, right outside of downtown in like the Winter Park area. Yeah. Um, uh, for those of you here in Orlando, I'm sure you know about the Enzion. You've heard about it at some point or another. Mm. Um, but so you've had films uh, played there. Mm. Um, you've submitted uh, both Clarity and Earth Perks to festivals, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask you for this again. Let, let's mm. pretend that somebody stumbles upon this this podcast yeah and um they're you know an aspiring filmmaker or they just have ideas for movies i want to know this Mm. i want to know what would you say just right off the cuff top three tips for somebody Mm. to get a an idea onto a film or into a film what are the, the just your your yeah. quick three tips for that type I'm of person? I'm so glad you asked this question. <laughs> this is a great question. Hit um, me up. Uh, I, I want to make it clear. There is no excuse right now to not make whatever you want to make if, you, if you're interested in filmmaking. Like, we have phones that can do it um, that are incredible in HD. Um, it's so easy. Like, you can just... It, it there nothing should stop you like you 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 can write you can write it you can direct it you can shoot it you can have one person in it you can be creative you can do animation you can do anything with a phone like the it, it's it's so much easier now than it was when I started in high school mm. and when I had to do VCR to VCR editing like it's a whole different world now where you can do it all on your phone mm. editing um, and that's spectacular um, the only thing. Um, and, and this goes back to the whole thing with my wife uh, watching as being my final editor is is the the, the probably the only negative of being just doing it the way I've decided to do it, which is make it all myself, write it, direct it, shoot it, edit it. Yeah. Um, is you're always in your own head, um, and there's not a lot of outside input, um, and uh, you need that uh, to be able to get it good uh. um, because you tend I tend to think oh it's great oh this is great this is awesome. And then it's I always great to yeah, ourselves. Oh, this is fantastic. Right. Yeah. But then someone watches it, like my wife, and she's like, "Well, what did you, what's that about?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Well, no." And uh, and a, and we don't. I don't want to get too much into it because it's a lot of d- description. But uh, we were we were talking earlier about the um, situation with Earth Perks, where I felt the need to establish this ultimate alternate universe of 2015 when it wasn't necessary. People can watch this movie and they can understand. People want to. F- escape that's why they watch a movie they know they're watching a movie mm-hmm. like they don't need you to tell them that they're watching a movie right like they they, they are willing to give up give up suspend their, the disbelief exactly yeah they're they're waiting for you to to take them on this journey for sure they don't they don't need the 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 hand holding like mm. the, they're ready and uh and i and that's and that's something else i've learned um and and i keep learning uh, when i make it when i make these movies and um and that that's that's I guess the best advice I can give is is uh, believe in your ideas, follow the dream that you have, but also don't be afraid of criticism from others. Don't be afraid of of um, people saying, "Well, what about this?" or mm. take take outside input. I'm I'm guilty of of not doing that, and I and I need to get better at it when it comes to my make making my movies because I I do it the way I do it. I make it all myself. Yeah. But outside input is spectacular. It makes your movies. It can only make your movies better. Um, make the audience enjoy them more um, because at the end of the day, I'm not the only audience member. Everybody is who's going to see this, and I want people to enjoy it. Right, so. right, right. Yeah. Um, it's funny that you say that because mm. my experience when I was at Valencia 
State mm-hmm. College, which yeah. was actually just a lowly community college mm-hmm. at the time where I was attending. Actually, I don't consider it lowly at all. I have a lot of pride in my alma mater, <laughs> probably <laughs> yeah. an, an undue amount of pride. <laughs> I'm like, but anyway, uh, I was studied a variety of things there, from music production to also digital Me video too. production. Both went to right? That's right. There yeah. you go, Val State, baby. Yeah. That's what I'm talking. <laughs> Another reason I like there it. There you man. go. <laughs> so um, I noticed that in all of these various programs, and, and they mm. are all creative fields, let's say. So from music production to uh, digital video production and whatnot. Creative fields. I noticed that all of the students in either programs, oh, it's in graphic design as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So all three of those fields, all the students fell into one of two categories, and that was people that were trying to be trained to execute a craft, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I like to think that that was, you know, kind of the category that I fell in. And then the other category was people that were trying to get out their vision. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't jive so much with those people because (laughs) they seemed obsessed. They Mm. seemed uh, like they had tunnel vision Mm. when they were, you know, being told the elements of the craft. And and there was almost kind of this this sort of like, you know, uh, you know, pushback Mm. of like, well, all right, that's great. I'm here. I'm going to show up in this class and learn these things. But like, I have this movie idea and like, Mm. I'm going to make this movie and it's going to be my masterpiece and whatnot. There's a part of me that respects that. Mm. I respect the driven artist and whatnot. um, But I feel like there is a really, really, you know, uh, well-documented record of success that the people that really, really rise to the top in creative fields are maybe people that can do both Mm. where you can execute the craft. You can collaborate with a team creatively and you can you can execute uh, a vision uh, you know a very deeply personal vision of yours as well yeah. uh, but you're probably going to want to have those other skill sets as well of being able to simply execute the craft well and being able to collaborate with others mm. and so it's interesting that you that you said that that's kind of been a struggle of yours you know yeah. throughout this entire process also for somebody who says that they they don't really um uh, work with others on these projects. You know, in the previous segment, you were talking about how you loop in your actors. Uh, <laughs> they're giving you feedback on writing points yeah. in the script. Uh, you definitely, you know, hold your wife's opinion in the highest of regards because yeah. she's your, you know, the like the the final failsafe. Mm. Um, so I, I think you probably do that more than you give yourself credit for. Oh, is the point well, of what I'm trying to say? <laughs> okay. hey, you, you collaborate. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so do you have any advice on, on people trying to get, uh, so let's say now you've successfully, <laughs> let's <laughs> say that there's like this one fictitious <laughs> audience member that's like, okay, man, I have an idea mm. and I want to make it into a movie. And then they got to this segment of our podcast or the last one, and then they hit pause and they're like, man, Jared Bruyard, he inspired me to go ahead and make the movie. <laughs> yeah. But he's the left the podcast on pause. Okay. So now yeah. he's repressing play again. Yes. Uh, he or she is pressing play again, and they're um, they're now ready to. They've completed a movie. Can we name this guy? Uh, all right. Uh, letter. The name has to start with a, a, an S. Um, his name is Samuel. Sil and S- Sylvia. You have to Sam- can a middle middle name Samuel Sylvia. Can we Samuel do that? Sylvia <laughs> is really excited about making his movie. Can it be a hyphenated first name? Actually, <laughs> S- Sam Sam Sylvia. Sam uh, Sam Sylvia. Sam Sylvia is wow. so excited about his. All right, movie. so now I don't even want the hyphen anymore. I just want that as one smashed <laughs> yeah. together name. Sam Sylvia. Sam Sylvia is. <laughs> it, he he can't there, wait to start. There's an accent on that I and say Sam Sylvia. <laughs> I am Sam Sylvia. I can't wait to make my movie. Please help me. <laughs> I was thinking they were going to be some sort of Western European as well. So I like that. Yes. Sam Sylvia. <laughs> Sam Sam Sylvia has the movie now. Mm-hmm. What advice can you give Sam Sylvia on getting that? movie into a a festival so he's already made sam sylvia has already made got the movie movie because of you Mm. uh and um and now so you know what what from your experience of having these movies played uh you know at a place like the anzion how do you take a a film that you've produced to the next step and try to get in front of a uh you know the right audience okay so there's a couple there's a lot more options now than there were when i started um so cool yeah now there's youtube and now there's the internet and now there's like all these different streaming sites and everything um vimeo that's like almost like a film festival website Mm. um 
Um, but that one you have to pay for, <laughs> sort mm. of. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's an option. If you're inter- if you're cool with that, like if you're cool with just people seeing it online, um, that's fine. That's that's a big option. That's very possible. Uh, it's and it works similar to the trying to get into festivals thing, except you can just put it there and then just try to get the word out, like mm. I'm kind of doing now, sort of, I guess. Yeah. Um, or um, if you're like I'm a little old fashioned and I like I like the idea of seeing it on the big screen. That, yeah. Like it was like I said, a dream come true to see a movie property on the big screen. Um, putting it into festivals, they still exist. They're not as crazy popular as they used to be because that was the only way to get stuff out there right um but they do exist mm. um and they're all over the place um you, you just have to search for for local film festivals that are coming up they always do them um and you can submit your film um and uh i mean they won't always show them but you got to keep trying i mean yeah. it took me seven tries before i actually got a movie shown on the big screen gotcha to the same place um and I still haven't gotten any other festivals, but I keep trying, and, and that's, and uh, and I like to think that that was part of the challenge. Was it, it challenged me to get better? And, right. And uh, I guess I wasn't ready, and 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 then when I was ready, I was ready, and it was and it, and it felt good because I was proud of what they showed, and it did, it passed the cringe test. And uh, I would have hated to have had something that did, didn't do that shown on the big screen of mine. Yeah. So it worked out. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's it. Just keep going. Just keep doing it. Like, uh, don't give up. Don't um. Like I, my uh, my mom always had this great piece of advice that's and I and I live by it is is uh, um, work to live, don't live to work. And and because like you said, I have this steady job that I do to to be responsible and everything like that. My true passion is making movies, and and I keep that passion up because I'm able to because I have a, a full time job to support that. Um, and the old don't quit your J job, don't quit your J job, J job thing. The, just don't, I'm stumbling on my words. Everybody knows what I'm trying to say. <laughs> don't quit your day job right. is the old joke. But it, in in my case, because I have a family and I want to be responsible, but I also want to support my passion, I can do both, and right. and it's fantastic. And maybe it's kind of better for me because then I get to make what I want to make, and I, I'm not subject to whatever a producer tells me to make or what. A uh, company tells me to make right. or final cut. I always Grinding get final cut. Grinding your way up, like in a traditional industry path. Right? Exactly, All like the, the 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 creator of your own destiny type of thing is fantastic, and that's yeah. what I, I love about it. So, yeah, keep it the uh, San Silvia. Just you know, make your movie and put Vamos. it put it out there. <laughs> Be proud of your movie, San Silvia. Just make it the way you want to make it, and then put and then put it on the YouTube's. And then put it on the Vimeo. Put it on all the YouTubes. And, and submit it to the, the, the festivals and perhaps uh, the show. The end. For, for those of you listening, you also can't see the accentual <laughs> hand that Jared has going here, too. It's so spot on. It is so like turn of the century uh, Western uh, uh, European immigrant. It's, yeah, it's, true. <laughs> it's it's a little offensive. <laughs> it's um it's you know what it's doing. It's angering me that you don't act in your own films. You uh, need you need to turn it up Tarantino uh, style. That that with the cringe test, right? Let me tell you. Uh, my it, it was my first time act. I've mentioned this to you. I'll mention mm. it for our listeners. Mm. It was my first time acting for a camera. I mm. have acted on stage before. Could have fooled me. Yeah. Um. I, don't get me wrong. I nailed it. <laughs> uh, but um, my first time acting for a camera, and um, what was that? What was the point I was trying to make? I forget exactly. Um. Anyway, you were a good director. I guess Thank that that's you. the that's the <laughs> the underlying thing that I was gonna say. I don't remember the path that I was gonna take to get there. Uh, but you did a really good job. Thank uh, you. Uh, kind of put, like you said, I like that phrase, the tone police. Mm. Um, I, I remember one of the first things that you mentioned to me was like, everybody says and does everything way too fast on camera. Oh, yeah. yeah so it's like, make it half speed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like from the start, make it half speed. We might need to even dial it back yeah. even more so past then. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so. Um, I wanted to also talk to you. It, I think it's cool how you had mentioned that the character, uh, Jake Stance, came mm. before the idea for Earth Perks. Mm. Um, so that's a pretty interesting process of how mm. you're, you're always kind of considering characters and, and uh, plots and whatnot. 
So what do you got brewing in your mind right now? May mm. we inquire? Yes. Can we open up that hatch and take a peek sure. at what's going on in Jared's um, brain as your next project? Absolutely. Yeah. So the, um, this is the first time I've come up with an idea um, based on a title first. Um, I was leaving work and someone made a comment about a list they were on um, when it came to the work they were getting done. And they said, oh, I'm always dead last. And I was like, dead last? Why isn't that a movie title? Like, that's such a, that seems like a, like a great, like, cheesy, like, kitschy, like, horror movie title, like, dead last. Like, in dead last. Like, in the movie voice says it well, so therefore it, it, it should be a movie. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, but this last. feels like a movie. Like, dead last. What a right. great title. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but what, what would that be about? What would dead last be about? Like, a, like a, a deadly marathon? <laughs> like, I, was, <laughs> I was trying to think about what dead last would be about. Um, but, so then I started thinking about it, and I, um, I always want my movies to say something, like have some sort of message of some kind um, that people can uh, and people can relate to. An obsession, ironically, is always a big part of it. I'm, I'm obsessed with obsession. Like I think it's the the greatest greatest piece of of uh, storytelling there is. Like vertigo and 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 things like that, where it's just the, I love the I love watching a character be obsessed with something, and uh. and I I uh, because that's what making movies is all about the obsession with the story and mm. the creation of it and everything. Mm. Um, so I, I came up with this idea where like this uh, girl again, main character girl, um, she um, accidentally saves her own life, like she's about to die, and she accidentally stops herself from dying. I think it's probably going to be something like choking or something, and she just trips and hits the chair and knocks the thing out, and she's alive. Thank God. Um, that. But that. But then right when it happens, uh, similar to the the old, uh, was it, what were those movies, the um, Final Destination movies, yeah. uh, she cheated death, um, which comes back to bite her. So she, she saves her own life, but then she looks up, and there's this guy there. Death is there. The, okay. And uh, played by you, hopefully. Ah, uh, yeah. This uh, was not. <laughs> this was not uh, discussed in the pre-show no, notes. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so now she's in a position where she's being com- always followed by death that was supposed to take her when she accidentally kind of took it away from him. Mm. Um, and she just runs like she just keeps trying to get away from him, and he keeps following her, and. Uh, she moves to new places, and she's. This goes on for years, and she's not aging, and she's like, "Whoa, yeah, creepy, yeah, this is not aging." So like, um, and Death's getting pissed, and like, <laughs> hmm. keeps trying to follow her. And um, can can I ask you a question? Sure, sure. Can Death talk to the main character? Oh, you're you're way ahead of me. That so yeah, so there, that is kind of where it's going. Like the the idea is that she finally m- makes a friend in one of these places she moves to that while she's being followed by Death. Um, and the friend has a similar problem. She's being stalked by a guy she used to date. <laughs> that nice. She, and uh, and she, they kind of confess in each other a little bit, even though she has to kind of hide the fact that death is following her, because no, no one can see you, but death, but, but her. But her. Yeah, gotcha. she's the only one. Um, and the girl who is being stalked, kind of in a drunken situation, comes up with this silly idea that, she wishes she could just trap this guy and just tell him to stop, like to leave her alone. Mm. I'm done with this. It's not going to happen. Leave me alone. Okay. And it puts the idea in her mind that what if I could like trap death and talk <laughs> to him and like maybe talk him out of it or something? Like, because I, because she becomes obsessed with the idea of living forever because she realizes that she's not aging and, and she, has this she's in a, a unique position where she could be dead last <laughs> uh-huh. she could be the last one to live in the planet earth she could live forever um and it's and it's intriguing to her and she's becomes obsessed with the idea and and to the point where she's like i'm gonna talk death out of it yeah yeah well that's the first thing that that sprung into my mind about that mm. is like if two any two entities mm. were together or, or or in the same proximity let's mm. say for such a long period of time, uh, wouldn't eventually a relationship need <laughs> they, to form? They need to speak, yeah. Right? And uh, I think, I don't want to give this another one. Or there's, I like to put twists at the end of my movies. If, if you watch my movies on YouTube, you'll see it. It's a, a thing. There I is a to, recurring theme. Yeah, I, 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 I like the twists. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, so that's why with every uh, movie plug, we almost need to kind of make yeah. a spoiler warning. But I never want the twists to be like M. Night shyamalan I want them to be 
emotional and 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 powerful and 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 sort of reveal whatever the meaning of the movie is yes. and the story and and that's that's my purpose for them not not to be like oh ho, ho. didn't see that coming yeah I'm not a fan gotcha. of exactly. yeah not the gotcha twist the, ending yeah not the do ex machina stuff I like the though the, with clarity that was a real like really pulls the rug out from under you yes. so I do think that that has the uh, shock factor mm, of mm-hmm. maybe the M night nah, maybe a little bit <laughs> yes. but. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, like you said, that that kind of uh, serves a greater purpose for what you were trying to achieve in that movie, which was to, you know, yeah. kind of. Um, I, I I like how you mentioned the devastation. <laughs> yeah, <I like laughs> that the... aspect. <laughs> exactly. So really, that ending was the only way that you could achieve that level yeah. of devastation. Yet mm-hmm. another plug. Go and watch Clarity. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's that's what I'm going for, and and I'm still writing it, still coming up with ideas for it. But dude, so I'm death though. Yeah, you're death. Oh man! If you're up for it, <laughs> you're dead. Yeah, and of course I'm up for it because you give me the coolest parts, <laughs> yes. man. Jake's stance in Earth Perks mm. is like he is a he is a total d bag, but he's also a badass man. Mm-hmm. He's kicking ass, and uh, and he doesn't care who knows it. And so mm. that's just a fun character to play, even if I might not like that person in real life, or if I don't aspire to be that. person. it's fun to play that guy. <laughs> I'm glad, you know, <laughs> death. Yeah. Come on, that's yes. the role of all. It's like the role of all roles when it comes to his, badass. His roles. personality will surprise you. I think. <laughs> nice. Is there anything you can tell us about his personality? It just that it's not what you expect at right. all. Like, it's, and there's it's rules. not like cryptic. There's rules. There's like yeah. There's there's. I, I try to create like a, a new kind of version of what death is and and what it can be perceived as awesome. and what his job is and 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 things like that and how he he handles it. But yeah, that that's kind of where it's going it's interesting but yeah i don't want to give too much away i feel you i feel you well thanks for sharing as much of that as you did Mm -hmm. um so we're going to wrap things up all right (laughs) uh, because we this is you know the goal of sounds of seven mangoes was to make these succinct podcasts Mm. uh but dude i mean uh, you made the trip out here to the studio (laughs) uh we're shucking and jiving having a good time it's been been a great conversation with you so one more time, I just have to uh, plug everything. Mm. Uh, it, my two personal favorites, certainly, Clarity and mm. the newest one, everybody, mm. please watch Earth Perks. Mm. I'm going to put the links to both of those movies Thank in the description you. of this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, obviously, find Jared Bruyard. Spelling is a little bit different <laughs> yeah, than, than what how it sounds. sounds. But again, you'll be able to link to it uh, from the links in the description of this podcast. Uh, you'll be able to see all of his films. Uh, on his YouTube pl- uh, page. Go ahead, watch them, subscribe, like them, share, do all those kind things that good YouTube citizens do. <laughs> now, you sprung something on me, hmm. the potential of being death in your next project. I'm yeah. going to spring something on you. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> Have you ever directed a music video? It's it, it's a dream. Stop like, it. I'm not. I'm, do I'm, not I, humor me. No, I'm not humoring you. Okay, so let me... A little. Do we have time Please, for this? Of course. Okay. Yeah, right, we have, right. we're already I'm twice sorry. the length okay. of a normal episode. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm just so <laughs> we're excited. Blown right. it out of the water. So excited. Okay. Um, so I've had this like dream project in the back of my head for like okay. for like as long as I've been making movies. Okay. Um, unfortunately, someone else made it, um, which was Baby Driver. If you haven't seen it, the movie Baby <laughs> Driver. That, have you seen it? No. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of got that like dead last uh, like you know vibe to it, where <laughs> it's, it's just like somebody. <laughs> just put those two words together and they're like oh that's so ridiculous that's we have to make a movie <laughs> yeah but basically it was always this idea where i always felt like like music videos are such an awesome art form and like um that are just so underused to the the best of their ability because yes because i'm like i've always been obsessed with music videos and uh, i was like well this should be like a music video movie and like not a musical but like a mu- music video movie where like the music is is like each segment is just like this big music video storytelling all connecting together where and I had this idea for this car chase and all this but it ended up being baby driver someone else already did it which is great because <laughs> I never could have made this movie because it was a too high of a budget and yeah, like yeah, the way yeah. I was yeah. thinking of it he did a, Edgar Wright did a much better job than I could have ever done he he got freaking John Ham so heck with that but but still you're um, probably not landing John Ham not not going to land John Hamm. <laughs> We're um, not even going to try. Jamie Fox, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that so yeah, I've always dreamed about making a music video because it's uh, because that's the way I think is it, it, when it comes to filmmaking is is the beats and the and and the drama and the the excitement of the music and the the the, 
because uh, music drives it. And I, and I put music in this in, in Earthworks that I just found, and it just it just fits so well. And and uh, yeah, I would I would adore that idea. Can I speak to that real quick? I mm. know that we were like ending the podcast a couple of minutes <laughs> ago, but this opens up a whole new can of worms. The music mm. in Earth Perks is mm. gripping. Mm. I asked you where you got the music from. Can you share with the listeners where you find your? It's royalty free music, right? Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm probably not using it right. <laughs> but a small d- legal disclaimer. <laughs> legal disclaimer. Probably Con- not using it right. Contact Mr. Brewyard's attorney. <laughs> <laughs> but <it's, laughs> when uh, uh, <laughs> discussing the nature of these songs. Anyway, continue. Uh, uh, I think it's um, uh, film music. Archive, I believe, is the is the name of the website. That okay, yeah, just org. Google those things, and you'll yeah. probably find this site. Yeah. The music free is music gripping. archive, free music archive, free music archive. I'm gonna have to scour through that myself because mm. the music is not like when I think of royalty free music, I think of uh, a placeholder. Basically, yeah. it mm-hmm. is filler. Like, yeah. and I don't know how people make <laughs> music that has that uh, that achieves that. Thing mm. of just feeling like, ah, oh, this is just music for music's sake, yeah. and you know it. <laughs> like you must have known it when you were making this. Yeah. Like so, you're consciously just making music yeah. for music's sake. There's no passion so it, in it. <laughs> I, right. So that's normally what you think about with mm. royalty free music. There is kind of like this paradigm shift in like everything stock nowadays. Like in creative fields, I've noticed like stock photos like there's like these you know these websites and archives now that are like are you tired of the same old stock look like we've got passion filled like stock imagery so it's like all the same usage Mm -hmm. you know coolness of stock footage but like it's it's got the passion that we claim is missing from this kind of music but anyway what i can tell you the true litmus test of the music adding to your film as opposed to just being the placeholder Mm is that I have a one-year-old son. Mm. He's almost two. Mm. Still one. When the music starts of the very opening scene of Earth Perks, we watched it together tonight. This is the second time that my one-year-old son (laughs) has sat and watched the film in its entirety, a Mm. 15-minute film. Mm. For those of you out there that are parents, you know that your child sitting still for 15 minutes engaged in anything is half a miracle, (laughs) right? Yeah. So he's watched it twice, and... The music, I believe, is, is number one, you know, probably uh, one of the most important things of filmmaking in mm, general. Yes. Uh, and that could not be more true with somehow getting a one year old to like instantly be engaged. Mm. So, like, the music draws you in. Um, and I think that it elevates certain scenes in Earth Perks, like when she's walking through the park and whatnot. Mm. And so, you don't just get by with that music that you're using, it is, it is really like raising oh, the uh, you know the quality of these scenes that's so, great to hear thank you gotta tip my cap to you on that mm. i don't know how long you looked or if you just like you know the the music on this site is just like no, it's brimming very, with excellence but oh, it I is mean, great they have some great stuff there it's uh, but like you said it, it, a lot of it is is finding it and and i went through a lot of songs that, right that just didn't work or, or so close like yeah they did they didn't crescendo at the right time or didn't you know but then but then i would find them that or that i could edit them a certain way where they would they would work well and the the just as much emphasis goes on the music on its own as the as the film on its own without that music the scenes aren't as powerful without without the the video the music may not be as powerful right right right. it's the combination of the two and and that's and that's what i'm always looking for is is it's the it's the marrying of of the two yes absolutely it's the proper they need each other to be uh to 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 achieve the 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 feeling you know right right Mm -hmm. yeah um you know because i'm a music guy myself so i i noticed that music it is um it's a very gradually building sort of music. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. If you were to just like turn that song on while you're driving down the street, you'd be like, oh, come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is not something I'm just going to listen <laughs> because to. Because <laughs> they could just like, you know, they're just like milking these like three notes over and over again. But like married with the imagery of somebody like, you know, uh, uh, being mind blown as they look at uh, uh, a, a park. You know, mm. the character in Earth Perks was astounded by the very first tree that she saw. Yeah, so that's what I love about before. that mm-hmm. that scene is that it's like, oh, now, so you're impressed by a tree. Here's a park. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, 
<laughs> like <laughs> overwhelmed by a park. Uh, and so the music does just a really great job awesome. of uh, uh, heightening that, that whole experience Thank for you. her and for us. So back to this mm. music video All proposition. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So my friends and I, we're not not even close to professional musicians mm. at all but we get together <laughs> and we play music sometimes cool spontaneously a song was born mm. in one of these meetings all right um the song i i really was very impressed because i've jammed with people jamming be the term when you hang out and you drink beers and you yeah. normally play cover songs and sometimes you try to do an original or you know, you know just like improvise right yeah and uh nothing good ever happens <laughs> <laughs> except for this one time oh, nice. something good happened and it and it was it was weird because not only was it good and sometimes uh, you know like you could be like oh wow that was really good we should build on that Mm. And that's normally how like a really good jam session yeah. goes. Uh, but this particular time, it was an entire song <laughs> from beginning Whoa. to end, complete with like intro, chorus, verses, like this very, very like poppy, like uh, punk rockish, like with some reggae mixed in complete song. And in my opinion, as a, uh, you know, a gentleman that's produced music now for, 11 to 12 years, I can kind of characterize songs. And and this song was like like top 40 summer hit. It's like the Whoa. like the song of the summer potential. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Um I don't go out of my way to try and write that kind of music, yeah. but like that's what came out when me and my two friends, there's a drummer and another guy who sings and plays ukulele, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's got this incredible like song of the summer kind of vibe, extremely catchy. And then mm. the other thing was that what blew my mind was that the song has this this story. It has oh, like a, like a cinematic <laughs> kind of story to it. <laughs> And so I started thinking about it a lot after we did it. And the other crazy thing was I recorded the entire performance of this impromptu song of the summer, right? Mm -hmm. And so I realized I started just like analyzing it now mm -hmm. that I wasn't like, you know, totally drunk. And like, <laughs> you know, so I started analyzing the song that we had created. And I realized it was a story about how a man meets his wife. All right, which oh, is, okay. you know, it's a tale as old as time, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. in this particular instance, the man meets his wife in a place that I think that you'll really appreciate because it's somewhat of an alternate universe. Mm. This this man goes to a place, it's a Mexican bar called Maria Benita, mm. okay? And this bar is a place where not only beautiful women attend on weekday nights, mm -hmm. but these women have a... There is a culture about the pla this place and the women that go there where they are infatuated with men who wear jean shorts. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so it's <laughs> now for those of you listening, if you are a man, ask a woman. If you're a woman, ask yourself, have you ever looked at a dude <laughs> in jean shorts and been like, oh, yeah, <laughs> like if anything, what I've heard throughout my life from women is, oh, no, no <laughs> like no. never, ever, ever wear jean shorts like and seriously oh, like no. you know try to do anything <laughs> like moving like because you're just a joke you're a walking I, joke. I wore mostly jean shorts in high school guess how many dates I went on in high school uh, you tell me zero it, it might it have been the shorts <laughs> I don't know I'm not trying to cramp your style or anything I'm just reporting the news via women that I have talked to they really don't <laughs> like men in jean shorts no. so th this place is it's the polar opposite the women if you're not wearing a, like jean shorts, mm -hmm. you're like the dude in a normal uh, place that like, you know, doesn't have like, you know, the dude in the club that doesn't have any money or anything yes. like that. You're not looking flashy. Like, mm -hmm. so this gentleman always goes to this place, but this is the one night where he forgets to wear his jean oh, shorts. No. Like he just went after work. He just like popped in, yeah. doesn't have his jean shorts oh. on. But here is the dilemma. Not only are the women there looking fine as usual, but he sees like the one. Mm. And so now he has to he has to go he has to jump into action, right? In order yeah. to pursue this woman that has captured his uh his his heart and, and his eye. 
um, he needs to rectify the situation of what he's wearing and he needs to he needs to pursue the woman. And, and uh, eventually, uh, like I said, I realized that like in a in a video, you know, a uh, complimentary video to this song. I assume what we're doing is we're telling the story of how this man meets his wife, yeah. uh, his forever woman. For sure. But the thing is, I I feel like I may like the tap has run dry. Like I I tapped into you know the kinship of all creativity in order to make the song that night with my other two buddies. And I've analyzed as much as I can. But then when it comes to the visual aspect, I'm like, I don't know exactly how we would do this, how I would show it and how I would go about it. So, Jared, I think this is me asking you (laughs) if you want to be involved in the making of the music video of Maria Benita. That's the name of the song. Maria Benita. I would love to. I already have an idea. (laughs) Like, I already have ideas. Love love to hear that. It's going to be really difficult. Okay. And really tough and need a lot of people. Yes. Yes, it will be all of those things. (laughs) Choreography. I have so... Oh, my gosh. It's going to be like freaking Coco and jean shorts is what I'm thinking. Like, it's going to be like... Like Coco the monkey? No, Coco the movie. Oh. Have you you seen Coco yet? Dude. you got to see Coco. I know. I'm bad. But yeah, with movies. no, Coco's amazing. But yeah, no, it's it, very like uh, I, you know, kind of picturing the 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 location with like all the couples with their jean shorts, the boys and the girls dressed amazingly. I'm assuming um, dancing, very choreographed around this two people meeting yeah. that aren't dancing but yeah. just meeting. Yeah. Um, and the music playing. And the one thing that always, I always used to say this, the like pet peeve of mine with music videos is the band. Yeah. We know there's a band playing. Why yeah. do we keep cutting to the band? It's all ego, right? Like yeah. we're cutting to the band because they want to be seen on camera. Yeah. At least we have an excuse now to show the band because there's a band playing in the restaurant. Like, right, <laughs> they're playing right, 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 the song, right, right, right. obviously. Uh, and, and, you know, conversely, I actually really appreciate those videos where there's a song going on mm. and uh, there's barely any or or there really is like you cannot see who's singing yeah, the song exactly tell I a actually story. really appreciate it's all about the, for me it's all about the story uh, yeah. i was mm-hmm. going to you know it's this is so funny i was going to say a prime example of that would be hero by foo fighters mm. where it's about that one guy who goes or the whole video is about that one mm. guy that goes and saves a bunch of people from a burning building mm. but then i remembered the foo fighters are in every room <laughs> Yes. of the burning building yes. when he saves each victim. that's creative. Playing, right, right, right. <laughs> They're almost kind of flying in the face of like, yeah. well, we could have made this just like, you know, about the hero from the hero's point of view. But like, you got to have the band. They did, it, <laughs> so. they did it more with a wink. They did it sort of exactly, a wink thing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I think that the premise of Maria Benita is obviously so uh, ridiculous mm. that there could be elements of that in the video as well. And the Foo Fighters are a prime example of that. They do that in almost every one of their videos, like uh, Learn mm. to Fly. They, you know, there's like, it's a, it, it really, it's it's a slapstick, you know, mm. the entire uh, shooting of the, or the video itself is just ridiculous, uh, you know, whereas the song is actually really, you know, straight ahead and very like cool, mm. uh, but the video is just like over the top ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so um, we're going to have, I, I'm, I, I'm yeah. glad to say, May I say that you're tentatively the director of the Maria Benita totally video? Absolutely, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm so in, I'm so into this. I'm so into this. Um, I, I like to think that we need to do something to like reel back the ideas, but like maybe not. Ugh. Maybe let's just like let's get like venture capitalists like Ooh. involved. Like let's get big money. It's, <laughs> like, I, I think we just need a restaurant, a lot of dancers, and the band. And that's in the two actors. I think that's all we need. Oh God, that's this is that's a, what I have in my mind. Is yes. that's all we need? Yes. Okay. And and a lot of those things seem super challenging to get. But, yes. <laughs> but I appreciate uh, the sim- the expertise and the simplicity that you bring to the vision. Oh, thank but you. dude, we're we just uh, crossed the hour threshold. Oh, man. So we're gonna wrap it up for real <laughs> this time. Uh, everybody, Jared Bruyard once again. Uh, Jared, please tell people how they can find you and your work online. Um, the easiest way is just go to YouTube and search Jared Bruyard, J-A-R-E-D-B-R-O-U-I-L-L-A-R-D, and uh, has all my videos on there. For sure. And like I said, multiple 
times. Definitely linking two of my favorites in the description of this podcast. We want to thank everybody for uh, uh, taking the time to listen to this extremely long episode. Rock and roll, everybody. Jared, thanks again. Thank and you. to all you listeners out there, this has been the Sounds of Seven Mangoes. Thanks for listening. Peace! Peace!